Joining us now with more, Daryl Parks. He's an attorney for the family of Michael Brown. Uh, Daryl, your thoughts on that, which is, you know, this officer has remained quiet and has not been out there uh, putting his face on camera because he's going to trust the system to do what the system is supposed to do. Will you promise to also trust this system? And I do trust the system. I'm an officer of that system, Megan. But let me say this. Even if it doesn't go I your way. Well, let me say, you know, I, I sat at a funeral yesterday, and I think that if nothing else, we owe this family the truth, and they shouldn't have to wait too long to get it. The experience that they just had is, is, is a deep experience. I mean, no family should have to walk behind a coffin in a church. And so it's not like we don't know who the shooter was. We know right. who the shooter was. There's no reason for a lengthy investigation. I mean, we know you where it happened, say that, who did it. You can't it. say that, Mr. Parks. You don't know that. You don't know what the police are doing. And now there's national scrutiny on this. The investigation is proceeding on two fronts. You've got 40-plus FBI agents investigating for the Department of Justice. That can't be done like that. They've got to make sure they cross all their T's and Dot, on the, dot all the eyes. But you know what? They should account for the amount of time that it should take to do it. It's not like you should give them carte blanche Why? to take Why does an extra month make to. any difference whatsoever? Don't you just want to get the right result? Get the result that, well, that, that, the, that the people no. of Missouri can believe in. The, all the people. The people who elected this county prosecutor, the people who will sit in the grand jury box, and the, pe the people who may ultimately have to sit in, in a regular jury box. Let me put it like this for you. Imagine if it was your child that you laid to rest yesterday in that cemetery. Would you want to wait a month? I would want justice to play out. I would want justice to take its course. And I, too, am an officer of the court, sir, so I can speak to this. Justice is not swift. It's not swift, but it's supposed to be blind. People are not supposed to be interfering with the process. They're not supposed to be pressuring law enforcement officers to rush it along because the community really wants to know whether there's going to be an indictment or not. It doesn't matter whether an indictment gets handed down in October or September. If it comes down, I'm sure you'll be satisfied. And if it doesn't come down, what I'm trying to ask you is whether you will stand by this system, even if it goes against you. Well, let me say this here. This, in this case here, I've seen the evidence up close, Megan, and I, I saw how Mike Brown was shot in the head. I've listened to the witnesses, so I hope that the system gets it right. I believe if this prosecutor presents the evidence that we've seen in this case, there is no doubt in my mind that this grand jury will indict. Mm -hmm. And you'll, you'll know. You'll know what evidence was presented because they have said that they will make that public. But, Mike, you're not answering my question. If they do not indict... You need to make a promise that you will accept that result, too. That is what is fair to the members of that grand jury. That is what is fair to the community of Ferguson. If you don't make that promise now, before they come down with their decision, then, then you are only stoking the fires that will happen in Ferguson after that, are you not? I don't think my, what promises I would make are important. However, let me say this here. Regardless of what the grand jury comes back, we will we're, we're certainly ask that there be calm and peacefulness in the Ferguson community and in Missouri. So no matter what comes back from them, we will be peaceful mm -hmm. um, as, as citizens and as Americans. So that's what we will do now. We may or may not agree if they don't come back Correct. with the right decision. And that but is I your believe right. that there's evidence in this case that is very compelling. I get that. I get that. I get that. And that's legitimate as the family attorney. I mean, that's I completely get that. But I think you also have a responsibility, you know, as both sides do to say there's a process in place. And as officers of the court, we stand by that process. We support it. We've signed on to defend it to stand within it and and to assure lay people who are not officers of the court that this is how the process works and it can be trusted. I'll give you the final word. Let me say this here. I think what really matters here is that the prosecutor in this case, who is going to the grand jury, it's important that he fulfill his duty. He has the ultimate duty in this case to make sure that all of the evidence in this case is put forth. Mm -hmm. There is a great amount of witnesses who saw what happened here mm -hmm. if they present the witness testimony that we've seen already and i'm sure there's other evidence that's going to be presented as well yeah. but we find that the witness testimony is extremely compel yeah. compelling yeah. In that's this right case. he's got he's got to tell the grand jury what's what's there on both sides and that's that is absolutely part of it daryl parks good to see you sir